been resolved. So I want to put it to you whether you will be the one, if you are no, uh, approved, you are the one who will resolve it. It says the National Assembly shall consider the estimate submitted under Clause 1 together with the estimate submitted by the Parliamentary Service Commission, the Chief Registrar of the Judiciary under Article 127 and 173. And four, before the National Assembly considers the estimates of the of the revenue expenditure, a committee of the assembly shall discuss and review the estimate and review shall discuss and review review the estimates and make recommendations not to Treasury but to the Assembly. Now what happens normally? Treasury they go and make their budget estimates and bring it to Parliament. And they want to force Parliament to pass the estimates as they have brought it. And if you don't do it, they they go and tell the president. Then the president summons the budget committee and tells them, this is my budget. But the constitution says the, the National Assembly should review and submit it to the Assembly. It is the, if, if there are things that need to be changed, then the Assembly will discuss it with the budget committee. Then at the floor of the House, they can agree that this is the budget we are going to, to pass. This has been a bad practice in our country. But no many, are you willing to change so that Parliament can have it is leeway, it is freedom to discuss the budget and pass it within the assembly. Yes, majority. Uh, Chair, with your indulgence, Another maybe just, just to seconds. put in better context what the Honorable Junetti is saying, uh, uh, CS nominee. Parliament indeed uh, considers what Junetti is saying in line with the Constitution through the BPS. But the main challenge has been uh, uh, deviation from what is passed on as a budget policy statement because it also includes estimates and ceilings. When you table your annual estimates, it is completely different from what was passed as a budget policy statement. So maybe just to paraphrase what Junette is asking, are you going to commit that what then is agreed on as a budget policy statement because that is what you commit to and that is what the house passes that then you will ensure that your annual estimates are in line with that budget policy statement and it goes along with CS uh, nominee into ensuring that you stick to what you intend to do because again the other biggest pro uh, big problem we've had is uh, abuse of article 223 of the constitution and, and I have engaged you in another fora, and you know where the current National Treasury, CS, has committed close to 200 billion shillings over and above what has been approved by Parliament without approval of Parliament. Therefore, uh, maybe I should also add that as a question. Are you also committing that in case you are approved, we shall see to an end, an end to the abuse of Article 223? because it is reserved for things that are of emergency in nature. Uh, not to pay for land like the Ruaraka land scandal, uh, maybe for information, the Ruaraka land scandal emanated from Article 223. Something that was done especially around this time when there, there are no committees of parliament yet set up just before an election or immediately after an election. Uh, are we going to see an end to that abuse of Article 223? <laughs> Thank you, thank you, Chair, and thank you, Honorable Bebas, and thank you very much, Mwashima uh, Jeanette. Let me say this. History is very, very important because we are told that if you forget your history, you'll be condemned to repeat it. And I'm guided about what has happened in the past and how we can actually have a good start in terms of clarity of issues and also clarity of regulations that are set. I do believe, and I come from that private sector background and that uh, thinking that uh, once the government sets the right guideline, it gives the private sector periods of policy clarity and that is what you are really asking for because once the budget is done in the wrong way, then it affects also the, uh, the, 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 the projections by the private sector. But I can see and you know that we had sleepless nights in our, in our technical committee when we realized the whole of 200 billion which actually cannot be justified. The whole thing is that it is history that is going to teach us the lesson. We have government led by His Excellency President William Ruto which is actually saying look we have to follow the law. We have to follow the guidelines that we create. 
and we have to make sure that at the end of the period we are evaluated on the basis of that. And I think uh, those are the issues that I will follow with the strictness. Uh, Junet, uh, and Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor. We shall end here. Mukami, you have missed the boat today.